everyone. Welcome back to JFM Youth Online. My name is Josh. I'm the youth pastor here at Jackson Free. Glad that you're tuning in with us. Uh, you can count on, at least during this COVID-19 era, that we're going to have a video premiering at 6 o'clock and hopefully some life groups after that. Or if you don't find us uh, premiering something at 6 o'clock on a Sunday night, then that probably means we're hanging out live, doing a Zoom together, and uh, we'd love to have you join us for those as well. Um, I know during this time when the weeks tend to all blur together, that the temptation will be for any one of us to disengage, um, to say, you know what, I'll just take a week off here or a week off there. I want to encourage you to not do that. Um, I know that it is incredibly important for those of us who are followers of Jesus to stay connected together. Um, the, the tendency for any one of us, if we stop uh, connecting in, if we stop meeting together, will be to sort of go off and do our own thing. And it becomes really easy at that point to be um, subject to temptation, subject to going down paths that uh, none of us want to go down. And so I just want to encourage you to continue tuning in, continue to stay connected as well as you can. In that vein, uh, as I've been saying the last several weeks, we've got Zoom meetings happening every single week, Monday through Thursday, uh, right about 3.30 in the afternoon is when we begin. And so if you haven't connected into that, we'd love to have you be a part of those Zoom meetings. Um, and the best way for you to do that is to connect with me personally. I'm going to drop my uh, cell phone number right on the, the chat right now, the video chat, to let you know here's here's the number you can connect me connect with me on, and uh, we can add you to those, those text messages so you know when we're jumping on Zoom and having some fun together. So hope you, hopefully you'll connect in with that as well. Well, last week, I gave you a few of my unpopular opinions, and wow, I was just so warmly welcomed by all of you. You, you just went right along with those and said, yes, Josh, we agree with every single one of your unpopular opinions. I really appreciate that, you guys. Obviously, that's not really the case. Uh, you guys were kind of busting my chops pretty good on some of my unpopular opinions, but that's the name of the game. This week, I wanted to share some more unpopular opinions, but not just from me. I wanted to share those unpopular opinions that I've gathered from some of you guys. And so uh, join with me in enjoying some of our youth group's unpopular opinions. First of all, Caitlin shared that Putting nuts in chocolate is really, really wrong. Okay, Caitlin, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that one. But Zach Smith doesn't disagree because he says putting chocolate on anything is wrong. Chocolate-covered stuff, he says, is nasty. Uh, Zach also shared with me, he said, Snapchat is boring. Ooh, bold statement, Zach. And finally, he said, Oceans aren't that special. Well, I kind of agree with you on that one, Zach. Salt water is not for me. I'd rather have a freshwater lake in any sort of circumstance. All right. Nikki says quarantine isn't that bad because we got to stay home and catch up on sleep for two months. Hmm. Interesting take. Micah says Mountain Dew sucks. Wow, Micah, language. Uh, and by the way, you're wrong. Mountain Dew is, it's almost as if God crafted a wonderful beverage and just gave it to us in the form of Mountain Dew. Thank you, God. Uh, then we have Alina who says pulled pork is nasty. Alina, don't. Uh, next is Gabby who says coffee is disgusting. Agreed. Uh, she also says that the rise of Skywalker wasn't as good as the previous films in the series. Gabby, you cut me real deep with that one. Not sure that we can be friends. Uh, Hannah and Jordan said most donuts are gross. Wrong. Uh, they said Drake is overrated. True. And then they also said sushi is amazing. All right, rounding things out, uh, Allie, with probably the most unpopular opinion I've ever heard, 
She said, bacon is gross. Allie, I can't even right now. Well, there you go. There's some unpopular opinions from some of us in JFM's youth group. Hopefully you enjoyed those things. Uh, I'm sure that, again, the chat is blowing up with you guys making your own comments on what's good, what's not so good, what's awesome, and what's nasty. Well, if you weren't here with us last week, we began a new series that we're calling Let's Pray. And the reality is um, prayer is a really important piece of our Christian walk. If, if you and I are followers of Jesus, then prayer is something we need to be able to do and do well. And I think the other reality is that most of us, most of us are not naturally good at praying. And it's kind of a struggle for us to connect with God through prayer. Or we just sort of have surfacey prayers and we're not really sure how effective they are. And we're not super confident that, that God is listening in. And so we began this series last week. Uh, we, we talked about the fact that we're going to be going through four different prayer practices that hopefully are going to help us to connect with God a little bit better. And we also said that each week we'll be taking a look at one of the 150 psalms that we'd find in Scripture. So last week we looked at Psalm 103, and this week we're actually going to take a look at Psalm 23. Now last week we also talked about a few uh, really important things about prayer, and I want to do some quick review on that so that we're all on the same page, okay? The first thing we said about prayer is that prayer is not meant to be a suggestion card between uh, from us to God, okay? Prayer is not something where we just hope God will see what we're asking for and eventually he'll answer it. That's not what prayer is. We talked about the fact that prayer is simple, that we don't have to view prayer as this really complex thing where we have to use super flowery language in order to connect with God. It's meant to be extremely simple. We talked about the fact that prayer can be done anytime and anywhere. It doesn't have to be relegated to just before meals or only on Sundays. Um, prayer is meant to just be anytime, any place as we desire to connect with God. Prayer is also meant to be honest, where we don't have to sugarcoat things for God. He knows exactly how we're feeling. He knows what we're thinking. And so he, wants just, he just wants us to express that honestly uh, with him. And then lastly, prayer is a conversation between us and God. It's not meant to be just a one-sided thing where I say something to God and go on my way. It's meant to be something where certainly, yes, I can talk with God. I can share the things that I think and the things that I feel. But it's also meant to be a time where I'm giving him a chance to respond to me. And I'm open to hearing what he, he wants to, to send me as a message. All right, so this week, like I said, we'll be in the, in the Psalms again. We'll take a look at Psalm 23. And Psalm 23, I'm going to guess you'll be way more familiar with that than Psalm 103 that we did last week. And the exercise we're going to use this week is something called imaginative prayer. Imaginative prayer. Now, just like last week, I'm going to ask you, raise your hand if you've ever been a part of an imaginative prayer. Okay, a lot fewer hands this week than last week. Uh, imaginative prayer. Yeah, that's, that's something that probably not many of us have done. But I want to tell you a little bit about it. It's pretty different from last week's Lectio Divina. Remember, that was the divine reading where we spent quite a lot of time reading through the text. In fact, you had to read through it three different times. And then you would utilize that to to seek out a word or a phrase from God and, and create a prayer based on that word or that phrase. Well, imaginative prayer is meant to be an exercise where you aren't actually the one that reads scripture yourself, where, but it's going to have some sort of a guide that will read scripture for you. Okay. Now tonight, I'm going to be that guide for you as I read through Psalm 23. But we're also going to give you some resources as to how you can do this even by yourself and have uh, utilizing an app that will read scripture to you so that you can be a part of imaginative prayer. 
All right. Now, imaginative prayer consists of five common components, and it needs to be done, like I said, with someone guiding you. It could be a live guide or it could be the app. Um, the other thing that's important to note about imaginative prayer is that we're simply going to use what God has already given us, and that is a creative, imaginative spirit. So as we hear the scripture being read, we are actually trying to use our imagination to place ourselves in the text. We're going to use our five senses. What are we seeing? What are we hearing? What are we smelling or tasting or touching? as we place ourselves inside the text, all right? Now, as I said, there's gonna be five components that we need to use in order to do this imaginative, imaginative prayer thing correctly. The first thing is you need to find a quiet place, all right? Somewhere that you can be by yourself without distraction. Now, as I said, we're gonna do this in just a few minutes together. And so if you're on a mobile device right now, try to find some place whether it's in your house, maybe it's outside, that you can be uh, in a quiet spot by yourself, all right? That's the first thing you need. Once you've found that, then you need to actually find a posture. And here's what I mean by that. There's lots of different postures we can take as we pray, okay? It could be you're standing up. It could be you're sitting down in an easy chair or laying down in your bed. You might want to kneel down, lay on the floor. There's lots of different ways that you could choose. You know you best. So how are you going to be, first of all, comfortable, but not too comfortable that you fall asleep? All right. So if you're going to fall asleep laying in your bed right now, don't choose that as your posture. So you found a quiet place. You found the posture that works for you. The third thing is that's the actual listening to the reading of God's word. All right. Again, this isn't meant to be something where you read it on your own, but someone else reads God, God's word to you. Like I said, there are prayer apps that you can use for this. I'm going to share one with you uh, at, at the end of this, this video. Fourth thing, imagine yourself in the story. So when you initially listen to God's word being read, you're just going to listen to it one time through just to capture what the actual word says. But then it'll be reread to you much more slowly so that you can have the chance to Imagine yourself inside that story. And again, utilizing your five senses. What do you see? What do you hear? Smell, taste, and touch. Then the last thing, once you've done that, once you've immersed yourself in the story, now it's time to reflect. Is there anything God's trying to reveal to you during this time? Is there anything he's trying to say to you? Any, anything he's challenging you with? Any way that he's trying to encourage you? Just take some time to engage with him and allow that just some space to settle in. Take the time to reflect. All right. So we're going to actually do this together. This might feel a little bit awkward because I know we're, I'm sitting here in front of a camera and you're sitting behind your phone screen or your uh, computer screen or whatever that looks like. But do your best to really engage with this process and allow God to speak to you during this time. So as I said before, I'm going to read from Psalm 23. I'm just going to read through it one time, just so you get the sense of what it is. Like I said, many of you will, will kind of recognize this psalm. And then we'll go through it much more slowly. I'll even ask you some prompting questions so that you can interact with this text. So let me invite you right now, as you found your comfortable, quiet space, as you found your prayer posture, let me invite you to close your eyes and quiet your mind. The way I like to do that is just take some deep breaths. I, I breathe in through my nose and out through my mouth. And I feel some of that tension Fade away. Now hear the words of Psalm 23. I'll be reading from the message. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. 
you find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid when you walk at my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. So that's Psalm 23, and I'm going to read through it now much more slowly and give you a chance to interact with the text. Imagine yourself in this scene. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. What does that lush meadow look like in your mind? What do you hear as you lay down? And as you lay down, what does that grass feel like against your skin? What are the smells that you're experiencing as you lay in the meadow? You find me quiet pools to drink from. What's the temperature of the water that you drink? And what does it taste like? How refreshing is it? Feel that drink go down your throat and into your belly as it refreshes you. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Take a deep breath in. Feel the air fill your lungs. Allow it to sustain you. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, What is Death Valley for you? What does that look like? What do you experience as you hear those words? I'm not afraid when you walk at my side. So whatever Death Valley feels like, whatever it makes you think of, understanding that God is now right at your side, what does he look like? Can you feel his presence next to you? What does he say? to you. How does he interact with you physically? Is it an embrace? Does he hold your hand? Does he tousle your hair? What is that interaction like with your father? 
feel your sense of fear move through your body and just leave your body totally. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. What is that shepherd's crook? What does that staff look like? What does it feel like in your hands? As you sense God's security washing over you, how does that feel? You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. Who or what are the enemies in your life? Can you identify them? Think about the feast that God has prepared for you. Six courses. As he's preparing them, what are the smells that you experience? Do you hear the pots and pans clanging? Do you hear the silverware being placed on the table? What do you see as God presents this meal to you? And what do you taste as you enjoy this meal that God has prepared? What's the look on your enemy's face as you enjoy this meal? You revive my drooping head. Allow your head to rest on your chest. And feel God giving you energy as he revives you. My cup brims with blessing. What does your cup look like? How does it feel in your hand? How does it feel as you bring it up to your lips? What do you smell and what do you taste as you bring that cup toward your lips, as you Drink from your cup. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. What does God's house look like in your mind's eye? As you enter into the house, what's the scene? Who's there? What rooms are in the house? What or who do you hear? Who do you know? Who do you recognize as you enter into God's house? And what's the feeling you get knowing that you get to reside in God's house forever? As you continue to imagine this scene, pray together with me.
God, I thank you so much that you love us. Whether we're feeling like we're in Death Valley, whether we're feeling like our cup is overflowing with blessings, whether we're somewhere in between, we recognize that you are God, that you are good, that you're our Father, that you love us, and that your desire is that we could live in your house forever. Thank you, Jesus, that you've provided a way for us to do that. We recognize that it's only through your death and resurrection that we could have a place in your home. Thank you, Jesus, for providing that way. Thank you for giving us some time together to interact with you and to communicate with you. And as we end this time with a brief moment of silence where you can continue interacting with us and speaking to us, I ask that your Holy Spirit would speak clearly. And I pray this in your name. Amen. Now again, take some time right now to reflect. Having gone through this imaginative prayer, is there something that God wants to communicate to you? Are you sensing his spirit? Let me give you a moment to reflect. And finally, is there anything that you would like to say to your father right now? Take a moment and do that. Amen. Well, I hope that you are able to interact with God in a creative way during this time. Um, I know this is not normal for us. I know that this is maybe something way outside of your comfort zone. If I'm honest, it's outside of my comfort zone too. But I've enjoyed the process and I hope that you have as well. The challenge for you this week is um, to do this on your own. And I told you I, I wanted to show you an app that can help you to do that. And so this app is called Pray As You Go. So you can download that on the App Store or the Google Play Store. Uh, it's called Pray As You Go. And once you download it, if you open it up, um, you'll see uh, a home page here. And you scroll down to the bottom, and there's a spot that says Retreats and Series. And you'll select that, Retreats and Series. And then you'll come to this screen. I don't know how well you can see this, but you'll swipe to the right a couple times and find this spot here. It's called Imaginative Contemplation Exercises. You'll select that. It'll tell you a little bit about what that is and, and the purpose of it. And as you scroll down, um, once again, select that piece, Imaginative Contemplation Exercises. And right there are six different exercises that you can go through. And they're all surrounding the life and ministry of Jesus. It's miracles that he did, interactions that he had, even one uh, based around the resurrection of Jesus. And again, it's an opportunity for you to place yourself in the story and interact with it maybe in a brand new way. So I would encourage you to download that app, pray as you go, uh, and experience some of that this week. Uh, I hope that these exercises that we're giving to you um, are helpful to you in order to connect with God in ways that you haven't before. And 
I'm hopeful that even in the midst of this corona lockdown, that your faith will continue to increase. Um, and that as we get together later on at, at some point, um, that you will look more and more like Jesus and I will look more and more like Jesus uh, each and every day. I love you guys. I'm praying for you. And I'm hopeful that uh, we get to see each other face to face soon. But in the meantime, connect in with us through these videos, through our Zooms. Um, expect in the next couple of moments to be contacted by your life group leader and uh, have a great time with, with your life groups. As I said, love you. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight.